My name is Matthew Sachs and welcome to my talk on the art of technical documentation here at ApacheCon Asia 2022. It is a great honor to be here and present to you today. I hope you'll find my talk engaging and the talk is for engineers and business managers interested in learning the basics of technical documentation and how to implement it in their organization. However, also advanced documentation topics will be covered towards the end of my presentation as well. In this presentation, you will learn the basics of technical documentation, how to set up a documentation system, and advanced documentation topics. My name is Matthew Sachs. I'm a system administrator by trade for the past 17 years, starting in 2005 as a network and systems administrator for mylife.com. I started as a junior network and systems administrator and was promoted to standard systems administrator after one year of working in the data center and IT operations department there. I had always done well in school for English exams and essays and had a knack for writing. So I took the skills I learned on the job and, and my curiosity for finding new software technologies and wrote my first published technical article on Splunk 1.0 for Sysadmin Magazine back in 2005. I created documentation systems and implemented other technologies for the development team to use to collaborate more and faster, reducing the time it took to resolve issues and bugs in the code, as well as plan and specify new technologies to be implemented. And it always started with a proposal document or outline of what was to be implemented. I also contributed and helped start the Usenix blog team, which I believe is still in operation today, and contributed to other publications such as Linux Pro Magazine, Admin Magazine, and Form IT, and other reputable online publications. From there, I worked in various internet-based companies around Los Angeles, such as Edmunds.com and Dun & Bradstreet. After working at Edmunds, between that and Dun & Bradstreet, I wrote my first book, on web development operations, which was published by A-Press about how to function in an operations team and re reduce barriers to better work with development teams as an operations professional. What you will learn in this presentation is how to architect software documentation, create documentation artfully, and design a documentation infrastructure. Why does technical documentation matter? Why does art matter in technical or engineering writing? Art matters in engineering because in the engineering and design process, you have to start with some kind of sketch or base framework before you start engineering, designing, and building any technology or software. Components of the whole document or product being built are inspired through artistic expression. And even the absence of art from a design or engineering document is a form of expression in and of itself. For example, the font I chose for the Word document for my speech, where I am describing the elements of technical writing arts, is called Calibri, which is a default Microsoft Office font. It is similar to Arial and doesn't have much detail or style, but it is simple and clean in design and easy to read. Therefore, by choosing a certain font style, I have decided how readable my document is. This is where art comes into engineering and design and how it affects the way things are built, as one example. Why is technical writing an art form? Not only is technical writing an art form like poetry, stories, movie scripts, songs, or a new programming language, or voice spoken language, but it is an art that allows you to create functionality in life that previously was unavailable through software. Think about the Uber Eats app. When you go to open the app, there's text to tell you that it is, in fact, the Uber Eats app you're using. Next, there is the graphical user interface which allows you to touch and place orders and type your payment and address information into the app. Then there are the backend APIs at Uber Technologies Incorporated that it dispatch the request to a driver's mobile app on the field. Every interaction that created this 
fun new functionality and mobile application that is the consumer facing side of the technical infrastructure that makes up what Uber Eats is, is some kind of art form in the expression of functional code, graphics, and sound. Before Uber Eats could be created though, there had to be some kind of design email or technical document produced that defined the patents and technologies or the recipe for the code that had to be produced before you could order your burger delivered to your doorstep on your iPhone or Android phone. Why do communication styles and artistic elements matter in terms of technical documentation? Documentation is an art form because the way you write and arrange words and letters communicates differently when expressing complicated ideas such as the structures and compositions of code that make up software. And documentation is what supports the process of building the software. You can write code without documentation, but without any structural reference to how the code was created, managed, and maintained, you may have difficulty performing those tax tasks with your code base. Each document and technical author will have their own style of writing and documenting software technologies. But when there are agreed upon principles in an organization of how documentation is intended to be composed, then it will make the code easier to produce and maintain. In the next section, I will cover the basics of technical writing. The basics of technical writing include how to write API documents such as specifications, run books, or how to operate your software, getting started guides and being able to describe technical solutions in a format that makes sense to multiple audiences. The audiences you're writing for are software engineers, project managers, operations engineers, and business and executive audiences when writing any technical document. To write for multiple audiences, it is important to structure every document with the following outline. The intended audience, here you describe what type of role the reader should be and what they would expect to receive from the document they are reading or implementing instructions from. Almost any technical document should have the following features. Purpose of document, the intended reader, the date and metadata. The purpose of document is what are you going to gain from reading the document. That should be described clearly in the beginning of the document. The intended reader, you want to always write for multiple audiences, depending on what type of audiences you will belie believe will be reading and benefit from obtaining this information. The date and metadata are just being able to be searched and organized by categories, tags, and that sort of thing. If your document does not contain these three things, it may become difficult for wiki systems and indexing systems to categorize them properly, properly. And without a statement of purpose and description of who is to read the document, it may be unclear as to why the document was created and to whom it was intended to address. Some of the key points to address when writing technical documentation are as follows. Ensuring the document is easy to find, ensuring it is well written, clear and has a clear goal or outcome after reading it, address assumptions of the reader, assess their skill level of the reader, make it easy to find related content such as recommendation engines, writing for multiple audiences and addressing all the intended readers. A uh, quick, quick note, I'd like to thank Jarek Podiak and Bertrand Delicatraz from the Apache Software Foundation for uh, providing input and suggestions on those key points. So again, these are the basic technical writing components, the purpose of document, intended reader, and metadata. Those are the basics. Why do documentation and aesthetics matter? Art is about visual communication. When you look at Da Vinci, Cezanne, Matisse, each painting communicates a different emotion and or visual message. If there's nothing else you learn from this talk, please note this section is the most important message in my speech. When you study aesthetics and design as a writer, you will improve your technical writing skill. As you improve your writing skill, 
you will grow, grow as an artist. Every document has its own aesthetic style. The style which you discuss, design, and create will have a positive effect throughout the lifetime of your organization, code, and documentation. So some of the most common documentation systems are Confluence, DocuWiki, and JSWiki, or wait, WikiJS. SharePoint is another one from Microsoft Documentation System. That's actually the first documentation system I believe that I implemented back in 2005 when it just came out. All of these systems are very good. Some are open source, some are licensed software. Confluence is my personal favorite, uh, just from experience of using it extensively and its bug tracking integration features. The documentation system I first used again was SharePoint. It had just been released in 2005 and it came with a lot of features for documentation infrastructure. Later on, I found that Confluence was my favorite option and integrated well with the other Atlassian bug tracking and software engineering suite of tools. You could reference JIRA ticket numbers with your, within your documentation and it would automatically create a link to the JIRA issue being referenced. I would recommend Confluence in the Atlassian suite of products as the most common, common and robust documentation infrastructure available for software teams currently. Still, certainly, there are many open source and free alternative solutions for documentation infrastructure. Setting up a documentation infrastructure for your organization. So there's a few steps you want to take when setting up your documentation system. The first step is identify which documentation system you want to use for your primary content or wiki. Do you want a paid solution, a cloud solution, on-site, bug tracking integration? You need to meet with your engineering team and come up with a wish list of what you want your documentation system to do better than just the, exi than the existing one. Or if you're just starting out, which goals you want the documentation system to accomplish. I recommend Confluence or JSWiki in most cases, but there are some newer systems coming out that are, look promising as well, which I'll notate later in this talk. The second step in setting up your documentation system is define the minimally required information you need in all documents. There should be a defined structure of your documentation style through the use of templates or otherwise that all members of an organization are required to follow. The intended reader, the purpose of document and metadata that we covered in basics are all nece necessary minimal components of any documentation style definition in any or organization. The third step is to create templates. S most documentation systems and wikis employ the use of templates. You can create a base template and integrate your organization's defined documentation styles and minimum requirements into these templates for members of the organization. The third step is to create templates. Most documentation systems and wikis employ the use of templates. You can create a base template and integrate your organization's defined documentation styles and minimum requirements into these templates for members of the organization. Your developers, basically to use and fill out the information so that your documentation maintains a consistent style throughout the organization. The fourth step in setting up a documentation system is to employ a technical writing editorial team. Whether you have dedicated technical writers on staff or appoint leads in charge of documentation efforts, you should have an editorial review team and process defined such that when new documentation is released, it is vetted and checked for errors and accuracy as you are operating potentially life critical systems based on the documentation being used to power crucial software systems. Imagine not editing or reviewing a document that describes how to, how to design the safety systems of a vehicle. You absolutely need a technical editorial review team in every case. Architecture design diagrams. So now I'm gonna start getting into a little bit more advanced topics. Architecture and infrastructure design diagrams are crucial components of building and maintaining any software infrastructure. Whether it be a mobile app, 
an application server design specification or a new web application or networking technology. There must be some architectural design structure for how the code will be assembled and built from a high level view. So when you build a building, you have to have some kind of established vision before you write a blueprint or build a three dimensional model of the building you have in mind. It starts with a sketch, graphic design. Graphic designers are a crucial element of information technology and software design. You will have to have some skill in assembling or drawing design diagrams in software technical writing. Product design specification. In this documentation example, we, we will cover how to build a software product from scratch, in this case, a mobile application. Any software product will need to be specified in the documentation before it is built. Before you write any code or make any design, there needs to be a document describing how the software, or in this case, a mobile app, will be built. This is a high level document. Each component of this document may have a supporting document to further detail the various components of a new software product design. For example, backend infrastructure specifications here will be detailed at a high level. However, when it comes to build the actual product, it will have to be detailed with a supporting backend software architecture diagram. Product design specifications. In this documentation example, we will co cover how to build a software product from scratch. In the case of a mobile application, any software, um, starting over, starting over. Product design specification. In this documentation example, we will cover how to build a software product from scratch, in this case, a mobile application. Any software product will need to be specified in the documentation before it is built. Before you write any code or make any design, there needs to be a document describing how the software, or in this case, a mobile app, will be built. This is a high-level document. Each component of this document may have a supporting document to further detail the various components of a new software product design. For example, back-end infrastructure specifications here will be detailed at a high level. However, when it comes time to build the actual product, it will have to be detailed with supporting back-end software architecture diagram. In the written copy of my talk, there's a document example of how to build a product design specification. However, here I've outlined the main points that comprise a product design specification document. The first section will be the user interface. We define how the user interface should be designed so that the design team can build the graphical user interface for the application or mobile application being created. Backend architecture. Here we define how the backend architecture will be built to support the web, mobile, or desktop application. This may include, but is not limited to, servers, serverless containers, microservices, other types of containers, backend APIs, and services that support the customer facing or user applica user facing application interface. Cloud architecture. Many technologies now utilize some kind of cloud computing platform. It's important to indicate which cloud provider will be used and the associate documents or sub documents can detail how the cloud computing infrastructure will support your application infrastructure. The cloud architecture will resemble, resemble back-end infrastructure documentation and diagrams, but it is noted in the product design specification because many new technologies now utilize some kind of cloud computing platform. So it's important to notate which cloud provider will be utilized and create associated or sub documents that detail how the cloud computing infrastructure will be utilized to support your application infrastructure. Interface, every mobile web or desktop application has some way of interacting with it and operating it. Thus, when building a specification for this kind of application, there needs to be a defined method of operating it in the product design specification. The methods of operating your application may be, but are not limited to, voice command, keyboard input, and touch input or buttons controls. The part of how the user interface is going to be utilized is necessary to be well-defined before building any application and may include user interaction mock-up diagrams, such as balsamic mock-ups. 
Monitoring and analytics. Every application should have some defined method or API for gaining insights into how the application is being used by users and administrators. There needs to be feedback mechanisms such as Google Analytics or Hotjar for web apps, Flurry Analytics for mobile apps, for gaining insights to how it's being used once it's deployed to test or production. Now this next section is kind of a new thing in terms of what are the components of a product design specification for software, which is artificial intelligence and machine learning components. It's not necessarily, it's not recently a necessary requirement for product design specifications. However, now with the growing advent of some kind of artificial intelligence or machine learning capability made by API services or libraries or by other means, it is now crucial to define what types and how the artificial intelligence may be used in your application and should be an integral component of all software documentation product designs specifications going forward. In the next section, I cover diagramming. Creating diagrams is a crucial element in writing technical documentation for software. Some of the common tools you may use to draw documentation diagrams are Microsoft Visio, Adobe Illustrator, Adobe Photoshop, or even Hand Drawn. We will be briefly cover some of these tools and how they are used to create a network, system, software, and security architecture diagrams. Visio. Microsoft Visio is an excellent tool for creating infrastructure and software architecture design diagrams, as well as network architecture diagrams. Any diagram that relates to system or software infrastructure can be created using pre-made stencils for most platforms, operating systems, and network types. For example, Amazon Web Services has its own set of stencils and Cisco Systems has a set of stencils for networking that make it easy to draw and diagram your infrastructure. Next is Adobe Illustrator. Adobe Illustrator is more of an art tool for creating illustrations digitally from scratch, but if you know how to draw an illustrator, you can make custom diagrams as well as with, as well with a high level of detail. The third tool in diagramming is Balsamic Mockups, which is a cloud and desktop based software that I find very useful for creating wireframes for building the structure and layout of web applications and mobile applications but could also potentially be used for systems and networks as well. Developer interviews or the developer interview format. In my work at the BitSource, which was a software engineering blog I created and traveled to many conferences around the country interviewing various software pioneers, I learned that the developer interview format is an effective way to discover information about the software that might not have any documentation in the first place. The discovery process is something that allows you to gain insights into how the existing code or software architecture is composed, and interviewing the developer or developers behind the code for your software can reveal insights into the inner workings and aspects of the code that might not be addressed in traditional documentation. Thus, it may be crucial when releasing or redesigning software to conduct some kind of interview to get all the questions out on the table for all the different skill levels of the readers reading the interview. Once the interview is produced, oftentimes it will reveal new types of documentation that need to be created to support your software and act as a reference point for more traditional types of documentation associated with the software being discussed. feedback, and editorial review. Every document should be reviewed by a professional technical editor or developer editor. With any first draft, there are usually grammatical issues, errors in code, and other problems that will prevent the document from being useful and error-free. Many technical editors can be outsourced on websites such as Upwork and Fiverr, but depending on the needs of your organization, it may be wise to employ an entire technical editorial team to help with documentation efforts in your organization as the role of a technical writer, editor, and manager, which is becoming more prevalent in all organizations' IT departments. Automated documentation systems. 
Now in this slide, I notate some uh, software systems for creating documentation and automating documentation, such as Markdown ASCII doc, which is used by the Apache San Cassandra projects, website documentation system, GitHub, very commonly used for software documentation. I gave a talk at Usenix Lisa conference about 10 years ago, the slides are no longer available online, I believe, about the need for automated documentation systems. This was 10 years ago for the, that we needed the automated documentation systems. At the time, the only automated documentation systems were specifically for generating API docs without much comments or explanation using Java doc or PyDoc for Python code and Java code. Now, there are many automated documentation systems for many different programming languages and platforms. And there are some automated documentation features now appearing in IDEs and orchestration systems. I looked online and tested a few free trials for automated documentation systems, and here's what I discovered. Cannot say I fully evaluated any of these services, but I can say they're worth further looking into for automated documentation systems. And that's archb.io, which uses markdown files, open API files, GitHub data, and other types of data to generate documentation. Technical documentation includes many aspects of how art is employed to create software technology by defining the building blocks of how the code is to be designed and built from the idea to the solution being turned into actual code. The way your documentation systems and content are arranged and disseminated has a great impact on the success of your product roadmap and code quality. Again, my name is Matthew Sachs, presenting on the art of technical documentation. I hope you found my talk informative and useful. And it's, again, a great honor to, to be presenting at ApacheCon Asia 2022. And to participate in the Apache Software Foundation is also a great honor. Thank you for your time. Thank you for listening to my talk. If you'd like further information, you can see the links in the slides. Thank you.